G'day, I'm Peter Fagan, the uh, Asia Pacific uh, Head of Sustainability for MWH, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the impacts of drought and climate change on the future of, uh, of Australian agriculture. We all know that the, uh, the drought and climate change is impacting on agriculture already, uh, particularly in the Murray-Darling Basin of Australia. It's leading to increasing water shortages and uh, record lows in both the storages and the allocations of water to farmers uh, in that region. On top of those uh, record lows in available water to farmers, we've also had uh, government initiatives uh, active in the, in the catchments um, in buying water out of the market uh, and returning that water to environmental flows. This means that there is less and less water available to farmers. Uh, the result of that is that we're seeing shifts in, in the agricultural businesses along uh, the Murray-Darling in particular. Uh, and those shifts are uh, having an impact on the infrastructure for people like the irrigation companies and also seeing some farmers change their farming practice from uh, traditional irrigated practices to dryland farming uh, methods. Uh, dryland farming practices are where we're relying entirely on uh, natural rainfall for the crops. Um, this increases the risk to the farmer. Uh, typically in uh, past years, uh, farmers in dryland areas have got a return one in every th three years with climate change impacting on top of that and the current drought, it's probably shifted to one in five. This makes it much more difficult for them to get a return on their assets, their land, their farm machinery, and uh, increases the, the impact on local communities uh, when they're not uh, generating incomes from their, from their farms. Farmers are approaching the, their risk management regimes uh, in an increasingly more complicated way. They're relying on technology, they're using things like climate forecast models to know when to plant and uh, when not to plant. They're making decisions about when to buy water in the market um, for the limited applications that they can. They're making decisions around um, when to leave their land fallow for a year. You might be wondering what this all has to do with MWH. Uh, MWH is the wet infrastructure group and we're working in two areas in particular. We're working uh, in a mitigation sense with farmers, so we're helping them become more efficient uh, in terms of their current operations. We're helping them with pipelines, with pump stations, with irrigation systems so that the water they do have is being used more efficiently. We're also helping with adaptation strategies. Uh, with irrigation companies, how do they retire stranded assets? With farmers that have moved, how do we provide new assets or new infrastructure to service their needs uh, as they move to new locations where there is water available? Already we're seeing some shift of farmers' uh, activities as they've sold their water and their land to uh, other areas of the country, uh, particularly in the northwest. Uh, this is a slow start, but I th it's a practice that I think is going to increase uh, over time as we see the impact uh, build and the amount of water that the federal government is buying out of the market also increase. You'll recall that uh, I just mentioned a moment ago that uh, the government is actually active in the market. It's buying water uh, from farmers impacting uh, local communities at the same time to restore environmental flows to the Murray-Darling system. Uh, those environmental flows are sus to sustain ec uh, ecosystems that exist along the river. Uh, the question I have in relation to that is, uh, are we chasing our tail? We're buying water to maintain a system that we have described and uh, remember uh, historically as being uh, one way, but we're buying it in a time when we know climate change is already impacting uh, the river. So are we trying to sustain a system that's no longer sustainable? It's really an important question and one that we have to consider uh, in terms of the future policies for the river. I'm Peter Fagan, the Head of Sustainability uh, for MWH. I hope this briefing has been useful for you.